Well, welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. We have a really different show today with guests. I never do guests. I don't even have a reason for that. Uh, but today's show is called Talk to the Entities with Ask Crystal Questions about Talk to the Entities. And I did, um, in the email we sent, I asked you guys for your questions. So we do have three people that were brave enough to send questions in. And we will be, um, I'll be being asked those officially um, by someone on the on this on this show. Words are hard, um, but it's day five of the facilitators training. I, this is probably my eighth or ninth one, and I've never been more grateful to be a facilitator of these access consciousness tools. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you're curious. I'm so glad that you're you in the world. Um, what if we being us is the gift? and the change that this world requires, which is what Dane always says, and I think I'm getting it in a really different way. So we really want to uh, gift you a conversation in and around the spirit world that will give you more view. That's the whole purpose of any access consciousness conversation is that you walk away having more of you and the gift that you are and the gift that you can be. And um, so how can that show up? What's possible? I wonder. I want to introduce you to Ms. Patricia Galvan, who's a certified facilitator out of Mexico, Enzo Lima, a Barris facilitator and an emerging doctor in Brazil, and Mr. Andres Cardenas, who's like a marketing extraordinaire, genius, new Barris facilitator. Um, they are going to pepper me with all kinds of exciting things, and let's see where we go. So which of you guys would like to jump in first? <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to start. I'd okay, like to start because I'm a show off. So <laughs> I'd, I'd love to start actually like with a question of mine, if we could. Um, I love your story, Crystal, with like the tools and talk to the entities. So I'd love firstly to know like what changed mainly like in your life before the tools and after the tools, specifically with talk to the entities. Yeah. Oh man, Talk to the Entities was a, a body of work for me that I resisted for a really long time. I, when you first come to Access Consciousness we and you take the foundation class, which is the first class after bars, um, you're introduced wholly to the work of Talk to the Entities and you're given tools to, you're given the information, number one, that entities exist, which I think is kind of important if you're going to deal with them. Um, and number two, that you, there's certain tools that you can use to deal with them. And for the most part, you're given the tool of clearing, clearing entities. Um, entity awareness shows up as all these different things in your world and in your body. It shows up as moods and chronic pain and, you know, foggy eyesight and foggy brain and technology issues. And I mean, and that's just the tip of the list. So, um, yeah, so you're given those tools and I used them way more than I think I ever acknowledged. And then I just kind of dismissed, I dismissed the, the body of work for a while. Um, it didn't seem that relevant to me. So whatever, fast forward five years, it's not relevant, it's not relevant. And then I'm asking the universe to show me what receiving is for me. Now that's a very access consciousness word. It's not like, uh, you don't hear that much out in the world, if at all. <sighs> And I had no idea what the fuck it was. So I was like, okay, universe, like show me what receiving is for me. And so, you know, things show up when you ask for things. I don't know if you knew that. And one of the things that showed up in my world, and when I mean showed up, it like energetically would not leave me alone, was this talk to the entities facilitator training. Now, I was already a certified facilitator. I'd been facilitating for like three years at that point. And this training wouldn't leave me alone. And it was really annoying because I just knew that once I let that genie out of the bottle, there was no going back. It's like, once you admit that you're that weird, you can't unsee it. No, everyone will know, you'll know. And so I resisted it. You know, it like kept like punching me in the face. Like that's how obvious it was. It was like, go to the training. And I was like, no, fuck you. Um, anyway, so a month before the training, I finally gave in and um, cause you know, it was in Italy, so I had to book flights and whatever. So I gave in, I, I chose it, I booked the flights and what showed up for me was so different than what I could have imagined. I, I don't know what I thought this class was. I don't know. I don't know what I thought. It's like, you know, the class for the weird people that I'm not, but Yes, it's true. It is true. It is the class for the weird people. But, but what you may not know is that you're one of them. 
Newsflash. Uh, Newsflash, you're, you're strange. Yeah. Um, but what I ended up getting out of it was so much more being and knowing and perceiving and receiving than I even knew was available. And so for me, that was that continues to be the greatest gift of this work. And <laughs> the crazy thing is that in addition to that, which is already in and of itself this amazing benefit, I also get to be this incredible gift to all of these disembodied beings and to all of you guys out in the world that are like wondering about this for yourselves. And so it's this multifaceted thing that just continues to gift. There's like no downside to admitting that you can perceive and receive entities. There's no downside. The only thing that's available once you start to function with it and engage with that unseen world is, is more. So for me, that's been the most amazing gift. Cool. That's awesome. And I, I want to ask like one of the people's questions, which I can yeah. start with in. So like, what are entities? <laughs> so, for all of you guys that have no idea what the fuck entities are, and, and Facebook probably won't boost this because I've used fuck three times now, now four. Um, <laughs> entities are disembodied beings. That's it. They're, they're disembodied beings. And they're, the entity and spirit world is as diverse as the world of bacteria or the world of fungi or the world of, you know, you take any family of plants in the plant world or any natural family, it's so diverse. The entity world is that diverse. And to this point, I would say we've articulated maybe 5% of it in the manual. So it's like entities are just disembodied beings and they run the gamut. Same as people. Like you can have asshole entities and kind entities and generous entities and arrogant entities and loud entities and quiet entities. Like if you really look at the spectrum of people, that's the same spectrum that you have in the entity world, along with all of the nature spirits and the earth spirits and the ocean spirits and the tree spirits and all the other fairy land beings and, and beings of light. So it's incredibly rich and diverse. And what I didn't know about cutting myself off from that world, which is what coming back into talk, coming to talk to the entities for me was like um, remembering. What I didn't know about cutting myself off from that world was that I was cutting myself off from like oxygen. I didn't know that the presence of these beings and my presence with them was so nourishing for me. And, and, and you know, we all have our stories of, of that. I can remember stories from when I was a small to when I was eight years old to when I was 12 years old to like a very specific events. And then also just that consistent presence with certain beings that were with me through periods of my life where I definitely would have killed myself without them. And so when I hit around 30 and I started getting into my head and like, you know, going, well, this isn't real anymore and cutting myself off from that. I didn't realize how much I cut myself off from um, an innate nourishment that comes from including the spirit world in your world. So long answer to your question, you know, and so, but essentially they are just beings that don't have a physical body. That's awesome. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Okay, go, Patty. Uh, can you speak more about all these? For example, I grew, grew in a Catholic family, a Catholic education. And so in that space, we, we, catalog entities like angels are the what good ones and demons are the bad ones so yes. all these separation and i start like re having this acknowledgement when my kid was more little she she starts like mom there is someone and with the clarity and with the whispers and the noise so for me it was really challenging to instead of scare as my mom scares and scares me. I I um, I have access tools in that moment, the basics. So I was present. But how can this class could be an invitation for mothers and kids and mm -hmm. all these energies that are present? And instead of shut down the receiving and the acknowledgement, like a parent encourage that for our kids. Can you speak more? Yeah. I think. I mean. It's Oh man, there's so much there. 
one of the first things we talk about in all of access consciousness is the premise of getting what awareness, how awareness shows up for you. And the first tool that we talk about is what's light for you is true for you. And what's heavy is not true. And I think that's one, I know that that's one of the most essential things to get about anything regarding being, knowing, perceiving, and receiving. If it's lighter for you, it's true for you. It doesn't matter how weird it is. And it doesn't matter if anybody else gets it. And it doesn't matter if it can even be justified or explained in this reality, because honestly, most of the shit you know can't be justified or explained in this reality. So like what I would come into any conversation with a kid with is that I was not empowered as a kid to know that I know. And most of the people I know were not empowered either. And, you know, it's our parents doing the best they could with the tools they had available. And some parents, I guess, may have been doing worse than that. But most parents are like trying to do the best they can, you know. So so I walked through my life just terrified <laughs> of everything, right? Like terrified of how my awareness showed up and what the sensations were in my body and what people told me those sensations were and weren't and how I should handle them and none of that really working. So when I come in contact with any kid and, you know, we have a really amazing little one in our life, Luna, who's, you know, when I come in contact with any of those little ones, my first thrust or my first like impetus is to like empower them to go, Hey, you're aware. So Luna, when we were spending more time with her, we we're going through a transition phase right now where we're recreating our, you know, how we get to spend time with her. But she would come and tell me she's she had two imaginary friends. No, three, three. And I'm going to lollipop, popcorn and Tropic K. And she knew their names. She knew what they looked like. She knows. No, she knows what color they are. And she talks about them matter of factly. Now, what was really interesting about having those conversations with her is she was really used to, well, she would talk about them matter of factly, but she was also used to adults telling her that they were imaginary. And I was like, well, are they imaginary or are they real? She's like, they're real. And I was like, yeah. And so I would just talk to her about my friends. So I have a team of beings that are with me. Uh, when I was, you know, 10 to 12, it was, they were very much more obvious to me. And if you look at the way kids worlds work, kids don't have, kids have to learn to judge. They don't know to judge. So as a 10 year old, I didn't have any judgment. And I had these two 12 foot tall angels that were covered in gray mouse fur that at night would stand at the foot of my bed and wrap their wings around my bed so that I could sleep. And they, they would show up visibly at different times throughout my growing up years to protect and care for me in these very nonverbal ways. So I ended up just telling her a little bit more about, I said, yeah, I have these two angels. She's like, oh yeah, what are their names? And I was like, they don't really have names. I've never asked them that. <laughs> but, so it's like, if, if you aren't wrong and if your kids aren't wrong, what I would look at as an adult is what do you want to create for them? Do you want, do you really want to create a world? Do you want to create a different possibility for them than your parents were able to give you? And, and what would that be? It's like, do you want to keep perpetuating that reality of fear and, and doubt, which probably didn't work for you either? Or do you want to give them more access to the wonder and the curiosity and the innocent weirdness that they naturally choose that you probably somewhere in you wish you could have been given access to as well? And, you know, if that any of that makes you lighter, that's what's true for you. So that's what I always looked at with Luna was like, I am not going to make anything that she says wrong because it's not. And she's not weird. She's magical and powerful. And so I really chose the point of view that I took with her um, in regards to, well, I just chose it. I was like, you know, this is a gift I was never given that I'm aware that I have power, that I have choice. So it's sort of a long roundabout response to your question, but it's like, what if you could provide for others the, the reality that nobody else could provide for you? What would you want that to be? Yeah, and that, and this is, uh, my why this class and all the tools that this class um, give us is like a big, big box of tools for parenting. 
and to empower our kids in 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 many in many ways. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things we also talk about and talk to the entities is don't be scared, be scary. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, is there anything actually that's greater than you? Is there anything actually that's greater than you? And I see a lot of this in Latin American countries in particular, but it's not only there, but I just see it right now there a lot where everything's made greater than you. The priest is greater than you. The church is greater than you. These demons are greater than you. Angels are greater than you. This person's knowledge is greater than you. So you have to then look outside of yourself to find what's true in order to find the greatest information or the greatest whatever. And is it true? Does that make you lighter? Mm -hmm. Just no. because it's the predominant story that everybody's telling you, does that make it true? No. And that's the thing for me about talk to the entities is we start to go, well, if nothing and no one is greater than you, then what's available? What's possible? What can you transform, transmute, can communicate with, cooperate with? What's actually available energetically that we've never been told? And, and yeah, in Mexico, it's like all these family ancestors and portals and all that things we make so more relevant at us. So yeah. everything that is times gazillion, <laughs> all of you, we are just trying to create a lot. All right, I'm about Papa Galen, George Boys and Beyonds. And that's the clearing statement. It's wild and wacky and it works. And so you can go to theclearingstatement.com if you'd like more information. Cool. What's next? Well, Rolf has a question. What is the most awesome awareness you guys ever had when asked something about entities? Hmm. Honestly, what comes to me is that I've always known. That was the most awesome awareness I had. It was like, I've always known. But I've just known in different ways. Like when I was little, um, I don't know, I would just play in the plants. <laughs> we had these really amazing like lilac bushes. Lilacs are these incredibly beautiful purple North American flowers that only flower like for three weeks out of the year. Um, it's like Canada. It's like you're waiting for the three weeks that it's warm and that makes everything worth it. Um, so anyway, and I would just play in these plants and I was just with them, you know, that sense of being with. I remember another really moment where when I was again, younger, eight, eight or so, and we were planting flowers in this other part of the country. And I could just see the fairies, little fairies around the flowers. And I didn't talk to anybody about it. I didn't even bring it up because it was just, of course, there's fairies there. Um, and then those times when I was a kid where, you know, the angels were with me and then all through my 20s where I had this being that was with me constantly that I would go into my room and be with for hours at a time that just was with me all the time. And I never, I didn't have any of that anywhere else. So for me, it was that the, the most awesome awareness was that I've always known this. I've always had access to this. This has always been part of my reality. Wow. Like, so now what, what's possible? What can I, what else, what else? Do you guys have any entity stories yet? Do you have any? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd like to tell one. Okay. Like, like Patricia said, I, I grew up like in Christian church. So I went with my mom to church and everything. And I remember vividly like going there and like being very, like, I just wanted to sleep to be honest in most of like the times and you know, most of the, the sessions, I don't know how to say it in English, but most of the things that happened there. And there was one time where I was like, Hey God, can I see you? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, like 10 years old, I don't know, a little older. And like, I was just like kneeled down, like with the, the thing that you get in, it's not an asshole. It's like a round thing that you get in church that you, I don't know how to say it in English too, but like, I was there like talking to God and I saw this like immense beam of light in front of me. I was like, Oh, this is God. <laughs> and I, I remember like the, the vivid sense of like caring that is being had for me that I've never felt before with anyone with or without a body, you know, yeah, yeah. it was greater yeah. than everything that I have ever felt before. So it was so cool. I think it was my first experience with like acknowledging that I was perceiving an entity. And it was so cool because then after like reading the Beans of Light books and taking classes, I was like, oh, that was a Bean of Light that actually is here like until today. 
like caring for me. So I could really like lower my barriers and like, acknowledge it and receive from it, you know, more. So yeah. I love it. that you yeah. mentioned that immense sense of caring because that's the thing that I continue to receive from like with with the teammates and the beings of light is that tremendous caring. And it's like, it's so interesting because it's this, it's the space of a sunset and it's the intensity of the earth with, you know, and the intensity of the earth is, is so much space while simultaneously being completely all encompassing, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, Enzo, Reba says, I, I have a long question that I emailed to you guys. Yeah. Should we go to, do you, does anyone else have any other stories? Me, I was I was uh, traveling in the in my young teens with my with my sister and my brother. I am the, the the oldest one, and we went to Europe as many all the summer. And we were in Berlin when there was also all this uh, difference between Germany, and I I, I really start start stressing me to be lost with my with my with my brother and my sister and i asked please can someone help me to speak spanish i don't understand english and then it appears a man that speaks spanish and that tra help help us to travel along all that germany to go to the other side and then when we were and we look at back there he wasn't there so for my sister for my sister my brother they are oh why do you and I, it's an angel it's an angel it's a being and all this catholic thing we may we put it in a very slow but that was the energy of ah, ask and receive and oh i love amazing. that so much i had a moment like that when i was in china i went to china when i was 23 and we were planted or just dropped down into this city with like no guide i was the leader i didn't know what the f i was doing and i couldn't speak the language and i was freaking out and this man out of nowhere with a car with the car like saw that we were like didn't know where we were going and offered to take us to a hotel and it was simply awareness i didn't even have no tools of access at that time because that could have been dangerous but i knew i just knew that he was there to care for us and he took us exactly to where we needed to be and we were right there and i and then he disappeared ah oh, so cool eric saying i only hear them make noises in old haunted houses i never see them why do others see them all i can say is the entity's um presence shows up differently for everybody and some people see them visually and i've had moments where i see them but for the most part it's a perceiving so if you weren't going to why, and you could go to how does this work for me, you would have more access to how it does show up for you and that might make it easier for you. Can I say something to that too? Cause like, I, I actually see them visually, but it's like not, it's, it's a different kind of sight. So there was uh, an intro class that I think is available for free from Shannon O'Hara, the creator from Talk to the Entities. And she asks like, what have you defined as seeing that actually doesn't allow you to acknowledge what is seen for you? So like almost every time I see them as light or like just like blur. So, you know, like also I, I, I love that question that she asked because I could acknowledge that I was actually perceiving it in a visual way, but in a different right, way from what I heard in like movies or like mediums, or, you know? And that is one of the things we address in the class is like all the myths and the archetypes that we've developed in our own world from media, from the movies, from church, from religions, from like all the different things that are put out there into the world around in and around entities where we've kind of unwittingly developed what we think entities are. And, and so we start to just play with all that and unravel that so that you can get more access to how it really shows up for you. And we do really address the fear topic. Um, so yeah, again, like this is sort of just a taste of it, but it's like, if you know that you're doing fear and less than, is that giving you full access to you? And what I look at is like, what are the entities inviting you to, to be that you already are, that you can now choose? Andres, did you have anything? I know you're kind of got a little background, yeah? Okay. I How's the background right now? I always had a lot of noise. I've been um, I've been aware all my life, my, throughout my childhood, that I was a superhero. 
And the only reason why is because I always had someone who take care of me and an imaginary friend, someone that I could have been under underwater for longer than the other kids. And I don't like, it's not like my lungs are bigger or anything. I just had an imaginary friend that lived with me underwater. I could have uh, jumped out of a bike on a roof from a rooftop and jump and collide into the street and remain alive and no any bones being fractured or anything. And I, as, as far as I concerned, when I was a kid, I was Superman. I was stronger than everything else and I was able to, it was no fear. Absolutely. Well, life goes on and then send you some mean voices at certain time. And then now we're all this uh, complex thing of fear. And then I'm wondering if, if there is a probably not capability to see back that old entity or that who was with me, that guardian angel that was with me in the back has left me. Is it that I'm not able to see it anymore? Is it that I am, the fear is kind of blocking it? I've always been curious about it. Yeah, I love that. And I'm just gonna mute you so I can really, yeah. So what I would do with that is ask that being to show up again. Like ask that being to make itself obvious to you. Because is it true that they've left you or is it maybe more true that you've cut off your sense of them? And you'll know which of those sort of has a greater sense of space to it. Um, what I know about our team, like the, the beings that are with you, just they've been with you forever and they're just with you. And the thing about being with someone is that it's very easy to cut off your awareness of who's with you. It's less easy for them to not be with you. So I would just ask that being to like, make itself more obvious to you and put your attention there. It also could be that like they were with you for a particular period of time and then they did their job and they moved on. Um, but that's sort of something you can just literally like kind of tap into and get a sense of it. Is that helpful? Yeah. I think that's the most miraculous thing about functioning as an energetic being because you don't have to wait for awareness. You can have it. You just have to be willing to know that you can have it and you can just tap, tap in and go, ah, okay, cool. Um, so it, for all of you guys that are maybe waiting to know rather than choosing to know, could we just destroy and create all that times gasoline? <sighs> right, we're on good bad pop all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Rolf asks, could entities be a help to change the future in moments of despair, or even death threat? just a way in a blink of an eye through awareness, some sort of takeover for what you do for the better. Rolf, I'm gonna to have to tell you that's a topic we could ad address in an intro class. <laughs> so I will put a link to the intro class. That's probably not something we can get to in this live. Um, but we have an intro class at the beginning of the beginning class that you could come to if you wanted more on that. And so did you have more? Yeah, we have other amazing questions. So like the first one, and I, I know that Riva is watching and I don't know which question is hers, but we'll probably cover them all. So the first one is like, how do I know if someone has a demon attached and not just an entity? You just ask. And this is where the class really um, assists in empowering you to trust yourself when you ask. But all you really have to do when you are around a person is go truth. Are there any entities here? Yes or no. Are there, into, are there any demons here? Yes or no. And you go with the one that pops up first. Um, thinking is slow. Knowing is fast. And so when you allow yourself to function from a yes, no reality, then you get more access to what you know and that you know. So you just ask, is truth, is there a demon here? Yes or no. If you get yes, you can clear them. There's a demon clearing that's in the foundation manual. Um, there's a demon clearing that we'll go over in class and you just, you just clear them and that's, and that's that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. So the second one from the same person is where do the entities go when they are released? I think they mean like cleared. Yeah. Well, so entities are, are, are basically beings without a physical body that are, that still are projecting that they have an identity. Basically when you don't, basically as an infinite being, would you have an identity or something else? 
Like we have to invent our identity. So when an entity, when a being leaves its body and it's still functioning in the spirit world as if it is that person, it's assumed that it is an identity. So what we are doing is we are giving that being total choice. Hey, you can just continue doing this identity or you can go back to the sort, you can be infinite and you can choose to have another body or you can choose to hang out as consciousness or you can choose whatever you wanna choose, but here's more choice. What would you like to choose? So, you know, energy has no form and structure until we give it form and structure. Uh, energy is energy. So they actually return to being infinite. Now what would they like to choose? That's so cool. I think Andres has a question. He sent it in the thread. Andres, do you want me to read it? Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, he said, with some daily body practices, I've been aware of more of me and who is with me than my old, that, that my old entity, like that old entity of mine. I don't really understand the question. Uh, Enzo, can you help me? I don't really get yeah, what you're sure. saying. I, I, and Andres, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it, he means like he's been doing more processes like with his body and he's getting more of him and he perceives someone with him. And he's asking like, is that the old entity that he perceives? Ah, is this what we already talked about, Andres, with just tapping in to see? I don't know where you're reading that from. It's our private chat. People don't have access to it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would just tap in and ask, are you the same guy or someone different? Here's the thing about like energies. You can actually just ask it things. You don't need a me. We're taught that we need somebody outside of ourselves to supply us with answers. What if you are the greatest source of awareness in your life? What if you are, what would it take to be willing to be that? Um, I didn't realize when I first started with all this stuff that I could ask me things because I'd been taught that I couldn't ask me things. I was not to be trusted with those things, right? There are people that know more about this than me was what I was taught. Is that true? Or do you, are you the greatest source of knowing that you have? So then it's really just a matter of strengthening knowing, strengthening receiving, strengthening perceiving, strengthening trusting you, being a true believer in you. And to do that, you start practicing asking and getting what you get. It's like, okay, are you the same being or someone else? Uh, someone else. Okay, well, who are you? <laughs> and then you can tap into that being and get a sense of them, same as you can with people, right? Like when you've got people in your pathway, you can, I can anyway, like get a sense of that person almost immediately. And you know that, you know stuff, you know stuff, you can't explain why you know stuff. When I was in my 20s and I was dating, I remember working at a restaurant and I would know in like less than five minutes whether or not I wanted to go out with somebody. And they told me I couldn't know that fast. And I was like, oh, so I cut it off, which is not my brightest choice. But I did know that fast. I did know. I would know immediately their whole history and whether or not it was going to do anything interesting. And so, you know, it's like, what would it take to restore you as the source of knowing in your own world? And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all the shirts, boys and beers. That's freaking awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And since we're going over, I'm probably going to wrap up now. I know you guys have more questions, but I do want to invite you warmly to um, an intro class. And if you'd like to take the full class, of course, that's available too. Um, intro and beginning. And it's if you take the whole thing, it's a intro night with a three day, four hour segment every day. Um, you know come explore, come see what this is for you. What's available to you? What's possible for you that you haven't yet explored or considered? And what do the entities have to contribute that maybe you've never yet received? I was trying to say something clever there and then it came out, you know, like that. So <laughs> it came out a little bit autistic, but uh, I think- 
I think we're all fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Cool. So I'm really grateful for you guys joining me on this. Thank you so much for all of you. And um, for all of you guys watching now and in the future, thank you for you. What's possible for you that you've never considered? And what if you included entities in your world? How much more access would it give you to you? Share with your friends. You. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh. See you guys.